Okay, so we're back here. Now, I did my last two videos without audio. I apologize for this. It's uh, My mom is back from vacation, so I can't record at night anymore without waking her up. Now, with this recording, I was actually hoping to delay it even further. You notice the last recording time in this one, there's almost a couple hours, almost. I actually wasn't paying attention to what the end time was. But, uh, yeah, I was hoping to delay it, hoping everybody was gone out of the house so I could start recording without being a interrupted. But people are still alive in the house and doing things, and... <clears throat> So there's a high likelihood I'll get interrupted in the middle of one of these videos. Anyway, so last vid video we were working on the Axis GUI. Right now, this is what we have. We have basically nothing. Uh, we have a GUI screen that when we open, by the way, does actually pause the in-game. So if we hit Control and then Grave Key, it opens up, it pauses in-game. Uh, as long as you're on um, a single player, so that's actually pretty useful. And we only got a refresh button here. Uh, this is what we're going for. It's something like this. This is kind of what I've imagined. I've had this ideal for a while. Now I just made this this uh, drawing here today. If you saw in the last two vi or last video, I started on it and then I finished it up after the video ended. While I was waiting for things to happen. And yeah. So we're going to implement uh, the left side of this probably in this video, and we're probably going to hit the right side in the next video. Or we'll hit this video too if we can get it. Now the plan is, so we got a profile list. So all the profiles the player has access to or can view will show up here. You'll select the profile. It'll then pop up all the details on the right-hand side that you can see. You'll be able to select groups, users, entities, and machines. And now what each one of these are, some of these are pretty evident. So groups is going to be your access groups. These are basically like your conventional permission group setting. You'll have admin, you'll have user, you'll have whatever groups you want to do. Um, then you'll have your user uh, tab, which will show all your users. This will give you an easy way to go find where all the users are and edit them really quickly. Uh, the user tab will show what groups the user is in, and it will show what permission nodes that user specifically has that are not uh, shared by the group. Because how, how it works is the user inherits from the group, the group inherits from its parent group and the profile at large and everything. There'll be an entity tab. These will be permission nodes specifically designed for entities, and these will also be entities as well. So you'll be able to take a, like an NPC villager and you'll be able to tag him as part of the group. That way he gets permission nodes and the uh, sentry guns and stuff don't shoot at him. Uh, machines is going to mainly be settings. These will also be configurations for mission nodes. There will also be a, a few tweaks and stuff. For example, you can say, okay, every machine in group A, don't, don't even bother checking for permission nodes. We don't care. But every machine in group B, make sure you check for opening permission nodes and stuff like that. Uh, the machine nodes, we're going to handle way later. That's something we're not going to take right now. The only thing we're concerned about is groups and users because this will prevent friendly fire from sentry guns. And of course, yeah, we've got a reload button here. So we have two reload buttons. I've already made the uh, the reload um, packet in the last video. I was working on that. I also got the GUI opening, of course. There is a bit more testing we have to do. Um, as I noted, I need to catch the previous and I need to check to see what GUI we're overriding because I don't know what we're overriding most of the time. And there could be a possibility where there's something that's supposed to open up and I just closed it with my GUI and caused a major problem. Say like the desk screen is a really big issue. That's gonna to need to be fixed and everything else. Um, we'll handle this as we go. Cause it'll have to be special handling. Now if you escape, you actually do exit out. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna maybe override that or not. We do need on this tab set up the actual access to the global access system. So it's not just as much as we got a global access system, we actually got to use it. But first we're gonna go ahead and make it so we can edit things. And just as a tip, uh, the global access GUI is also gonna be used for the permission system that is in Volts Engine for commands. So there'll be a separate version that opens up that is designed just for the command system. And that'll let admins edit uh, their actual user groups and stuff that are used for commands. So you'll be able to make your donator groups, you'll make your user groups, edit which commands are accessible and everything. I'll work on that later, but it's not something that's a priority, especially considering I still need to separate the access system away from Volts Engine. It needs to become its own little lib. Uh, it will be pre-included with Volts Engine. You don't have to worry about downloading another thing. Because I mean, there was a recent issue where the coding lib was not downloading properly. This had to do with uh, DMOD removing the dash universal at the end of it. And I don't know why it was there in the first place. I think he added it just because he didn't know a better way to handle it. But the coding lib should have never had a dash universal at the end. Uh, but... Um, yeah, let's work on this more. So, right at the end of the last video, I started going ahead and setting this up. So I want to be able to list a certain number of groups here. So I'm going to really quickly, with my thumb, count how many I can think I fit here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. So we can probably do 10. 
Um, and these are just going to be standard buttons. We're not going to do anything special with these. Uh, we need to store an array, but we're not going to do the array right now. We're just going to get everything laid out. So we'll go um, shoot button to button equals new GUI button to. And this will be i plus 1, because so we'll just start the index. Actually, we're, we'll do uh, 10 plus i to keep consistent with our other methodology we use. Um, we want these to start from the edge, so it will be 5 is what the x is going to be, and then the y will be 40 plus i times 25. And then this will be, we'll just do button plus i right now. That's how we'll go ahead and handle this. And this will be button list. I actually have to go and make a whole bunch of prefabs here later for this. Uh, as you notice, we're not using our container base for this because we need a, we need the full screen. And uh, in order to get to work on the full screen, I got to do a lot of things. Plus, I got to we're going to use this because this will prevent any eye from running. Any eye will run on anything that's a container because of the way it's set up, and we don't want that to happen. Anyways, we'll go ahead and exit out of this, and we'll open it back up. Oh, I hit uh, Control Escape. Does that? that? I didn't know that was a thing. Apparently, control escape open things. So yeah, we got our, our buttons here. Um, we're gonna want to do 20 instead of 25. I was I was thinking we were gonna have a space between each one of them, but that's not gonna do good. You know what? Instead of having to reload this every single time, um, we're just gonna do this real quick. And this is the lazy man's way of working on GUIs. So there we go. We got all our buttons here. So this will be our axis groups. Uh, we don't need these to be 200 long. These are way, way, way too long. Um, this would be profile. Let's go ahead and just do this because most of your profiles are actually going to be named this way. It'll be profile and then some number. The uh, the oh shoot, uh, that that's going to error. Error screen popped up on the other window already. I, I need to set up some way uh, to record both of my monitors roughly at the same time. Not exactly. Uh, I know the the current recording system I'm using is not the perfect resolution that YouTube wants. So what I might do is figure out what that resolution is and then have some kind of black space on the right or left and then put my other monitors on that right and left so you can see that there's activity going on there and then I'll go ahead and set up the hotkey so we can switch between them. Right now I only got the one monitor plugged in. I do plan to plug the other one back in as soon as I'm done repairing my brother's computers. Uh, I, I, only for this, I did already fix his computer. So we, what we did is we get it an older computer and put all of his parts in the older computer. But I still have his motherboard and another graphics card that I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with. And that's where my other monitor is right now. So we got this. Uh, the button needs to be a certain size. Um, so we're going to go 100 by 20. Well, apparently this is going to cry baby about the variables. Okay, with height and key. Okay. I don't really like how the buttons are handled in this, to be honest. Yeah, that's better. That's about the size we want them. So you would want to render some kind of box behind this, um, some kind of translucent box. You know, so this is translucent here. We would have something to be a little darker that it would render here to add a separator bar. And then we have our, our main window over here for editing. Uh, fun tip is when I do the in-game uh, Wiki editor and do the in-game JSON editor, they're going to use the same exact style of GUI. So you'll be able to open up in-game and do all your JSON editing and you do all your Wiki editing. So I want to be able to make the Wiki editor accessible via Minecraft itself. That way you can open up the JSON files, which will make up the Wiki locally. Toy around with them. Then even synchronize your Git changes from inside Minecraft, which will be pretty baller when you think about it. You'll be able to open up any Minecraft client that has, say, ICDM installed and edit the real Wiki that is being used. That is if you have login access. Um, if you don't, you're going to have to do pull requests, which uh, I don't know how to do through Git properly. Because uh, the only way I know how to do it is to fork it on your own repository. But there's, there's probably some kind of command chain I can make that would make a, a merge request. So we got this, uh, and then what we're going to do is, whichever one you select, so uh, what we're going to have to do is actually just close this real quick, is I need to keep track of the buttons we have, and then a few other things. So GUI button 2, and this will be an array, um, profile buttons. This would be profile buttons would basically just equal uh, a new GUI array to. And of course, we're remaking this every single tick, but the thing is we wouldn't be remaking this every single tick, so don't don't go screaming, oh my god, you're wasting so much profiles, or you're using how much RAM, what fell next to me? Something fell, whatever. Not, not that important. 
probably a pop bottle or something. Whatever it was, it sounded loud. Concerned about that, actually. I don't see... I see just nothing but cores on the floor in my room, unfortunately. Been moving around a lot of computers. I'm trying to get my, uh, my servers back online. I, I used to have, like, tons of these little servers, which, when I'm talking about servers, I'm talking about, like, old desktop PCs. Because uh, what I do is I take them, I install Linux on them and stuff, and I use them as if they were a server rack. So I'll chain them all together, and I'll make them do stuff, and uh, they're all out of commission. I only own, like, four of them now. I used to have tons. But uh, I need to get back online, get the file server running, get my local Jenkins server running, which is going to end up running Mr. Smith when I get it done. But, uh, yeah, so we want to cache our profiles. Then on action performance, we're going to go else if uh, ID is greater than or equal to 10 and ID is less than 20, I guess. So we're just going to have 10 IDs. Um, and index equals ID minus 10, so that'll get our index inside the array. Um, we want to go... Uh, we need to store some kind of local variable. So we're going to int current profile current profile index um. hmm I didn't think it's through okay so we need an array and now we need a we need, uh, we need, we need something. That's that's the problem. Is that we need some kind of system to access our, our profiles. Um, we're just gonna do this the hard way. So go profile names, string, profile IDs. And what we want to do is we want to um, go if uh, current profile index does not equal index, and we need to make sure our index is negative one. And then we want to go profile buttons dot index dot disable. So we want to disable the button. Uh, then we want to go okay. Current profile index equals index. And before we do that, we want to make sure we go profile buttons dot current profile index dot enable. And before before we do this, we also want to go profile, or we're going to go current profile index does not equal negative one. So we want to make sure we're not trying to disable a negative entry because there isn't going to be nothing there. Um, yeah, it looks good. And then we also want to go if profile buttons dot index doesn't equal null. We're going to go ahead and just disable profile index right there. That looks like that'll work because this, this will select our button we want to enable. It'll set our current profile index. Uh, then we need some kind of option here. So we want to do load profile and this will be like get, get your current index and load up that profile right now we don't really have anything um actually we could do some stuff here so we do have we do have some string draws what the hell does super do oh, it renders all the it renders all the buttons uh i just put that down there. oh yeah we're just straight out drawing a screen i just i just realized this there's no foreground there's no background render it's just all, all everything's drawn in the same spot okay so Our button length is 100 plus our offset of 105. So this wants to be 120 would be a good spot for this. And this will be profile. And then we'll put the name here. So we'll go, actually, we're just going to do this real quick. And we'll do ID underneath it. We're going to do this as 120 on the X as well, but then I'm going to change, this needs to be 20, and we'll make this 30, and then we need to get 
you know, we'll, we'll just make some variables here. String, so it goes string name equals, and it'll go string ID equals. That way we don't have to do anything special for this. We just have to just make sure our, whatever, get whatever our current profile is. Um, I'm going to go if uh, current profile does not equal null. Our current index doesn't equal negative one. Actually, we need something even better than that. Uh, we need to make sure our current index is greater than or equal to zero, and we need to make sure our current index is less than uh, profile names dot length. Because that's what's going to really matter is what if we're if we're inside those arrays, and those two arrays are going to match because these are basically parallel arrays, is what these are kind of. So they're both related to each other. So the first entry in both these is or be uh, related to the same profile. Um, so we get name equals profile names dot current profile index. We we'll have to load data too for this. This is where the uh, packet ID system is. So that read here, that packet ID actually is being sent. The problem is we actually don't have any profiles loaded, so we may have to go make some fake profiles just for testing here. This will be profile IDs. Okay. Yeah, just for testing reasons, I'm going to do this real quick. That is a trap. I, I, I actually like that scholarship site. The problem is, is that uh, I've went, I've literally filled out almost every scholarship I could find on there, and I still have not got one. At this point, I'm just like, you know what? It's a trap. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that. Type all this in. Well, we'll just do three real quick, just so we don't have an empty array, so we get some testing variables running. And we'll go ahead and pop it up. Yeah, we're already at 17 minutes. Yeah, so it's going to be uh, quite a few videos before I get the permission system done. Uh, it, it, I need to get it done though, because I have a client who wants a sentry gun, and I don't think he comprehended just how much work these are going to be, because he wanted something that was PvP orientated. So you wanted something to be shoot friendlies and stuff, and I don't want to make a whole custom system just for him. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make your sentry part of the, or gonna make your sentry an add-on to the army mod, and then I'm gonna let you piggyback all the army mod's fun features. So he's getting a lot for his his buck, by the way, because I think he's paying like almost nothing for the sentry guns. Uh, yeah, I'm getting basically an hour's pay. I think it was like ten dollars. It's not saying I'm gonna make another sentry gun for ten bucks because. Um, Supply, I won't say supply and demand, but it's not even that. He's kind of getting a discount because I'm using it as an excuse to work on my sentry guns. So I'm getting revenue externally is kind of how to how to put it. There's, there's some weird mentality behind it. I don't know what it is, though. I don't care enough to pay attention to it because it's not really that important. Ah, oh, there we go. Some of them drink real quick. Throw it dries out really quickly when I'm doing these videos. Yeah, we'll test this. Uh, hopefully get this done sometime this week. Because I want to have the whole permission system done this week. Uh, then I want to get ICBM completely converted to the node system this week. So if this starts taking too long, I'm probably going to abandon uh, working on this. And I'll just tell my client that the turrets will shoot at random people until I get it done. Uh, he doesn't seem to be in a rush. At least I don't think he is. I don't know. If he complains, he complains. I just tell him, like, hey, it takes time. If he complains more, I just tell him there's no contract either, which means he can't, he can't uh, tell me that he wants it done faster. Uh, game rules do all so, so we would turn off the day night cycle. Uh, okay, so we're not working on that. We're working on this. Okay, so we got our things here. Okay, there's where our profile ID is. Um, oh yeah, we're drawing a center string. We just want to draw a string. That's the reason why these are off. That's actually not bad. Um, 
We'll move them over by another 10 real quick. That's good. Um, so if we select these, so you get, we get our things here. It's not disabling the button though, so uh, I want to fix that. It should disable the button though. So we enable the previous button, we disable. Okay, we got it. We just have to check this real quick. So we come through. Somehow we're equivalent to the index. ID is 10. Okay. Hit the button again. Okay, so our, our index is zero. Our current profile index is zero. All right, we need to hit a different button. Okay, so we're disabling the button. Setting our current index to one, but the button should be disabled. Doesn't make any sense. Let me make sure this disabled call works properly. Yeah, it's it's doing the super enabled thing, so unless the GUI is deciding it doesn't want to handle the stable function. Oh, I know exactly what's going wrong. Um, I can fix this. Uh, by recalling initialization every single time we do something, uh, we're basically setting it back to re-enable the state. So, should fix, I guess. There we go. So it disables the one we're currently on. Yeah, that works. So that part was easy. Uh, now we just need to start displaying uh, the groups inside of a profile. So we're going to have to come up with some way to synchronize profiles. Uh, we're going <clears> to <throat> need a fake profile. I'm trying to think of how to do this. There's a couple different things we're going to have to do. We're going to have to keep track of whatever profile we have open. So access profile current profile so we have to do keep track of that put this actually up here and I'll move the buttons up to there so we're gonna have to load down our current profiles uh, we're gonna then have to keep track of the current profile so we can list out all the data make all the buttons initialize the GUI again What we'll do is set enabled if i equals current profile index. That way, if we, we actually do re enable the GUI, it, it'll fix itself. Um, <clears throat> we then want to do this real quick. So we want to go, okay, profile, or we make sure this is less than profile names. And i is less than profile names.length. Hopefully that'll never be null, so we don't have to worry about stuff breaking. Um, then what we want to do is I guess we're just going to use the profile name and just hope people are smart enough to uh, not name their stuff really stupidly. It's probably not going to be the case though. Uh, we're probably going to end up with custom buttons for the profile thing. That way we can show both the profile name and the ID at the same time on a button. So that way you can see the ID. So if you're looking for, like, say, uh, profile ID like hex like 56 or something, uh, you won't have to keep clicking each profile until you find the ID. And that way you can do that way. Because when you go to put stuff in the machines, you're not putting the display name in there. You're putting the ID. So it's whatever that ID is. And the ID are meant to be unique. Um, unfortunately, the default IDs that are generated are 
not humanly readable because they're going to be some kind of prefix name followed by the the exact millisecond time they were made and then millisecond time is going to be pretty long it'll be 20 characters i think i don't know how long millisecond times are on average um so we got that that'll work uh we just need to do packet handling for this and quite a few things we gotta do i'm trying to decide if i just want to make the the gui to make the new profiles right now or just wait because i mean we're gonna have to do it regardless but we're in a chicken or egg scenario do we want to make the profile creator first or do we want to make the profile viewer and right now we're doing the viewer uh the, although the creator would be in the same gui so you'd be you'd have a Actually, you, it would be a different GUI, just because it would be easier to handle. Speaking of which, where's that refresh button? Refresh negative one. I, I'm actually gonna put an ID on these things. Int ID, and this will be public packet request data. You gotta have an empty pack packet constructor, or, or forge will crash when reading your packet. There we go. That'll give us an ID and we just can go really quickly if uh, ID equals zero. We write that real quick. And then ID one will be a specific profile. So it'll be packet GY. We'll, we'll just use packet ID one. Uh, but what's going to be synchronized will be completely different. Um, so you'll be synchronizing Pretty much the entire profile. I think the profiles do come with a save option built into them, so we shouldn't have to do any work. What we are going to have to do is keep track of players who have the GUI open. And this is going to be tricky. Cat, shoo. Cat sticking through my paper pile. Um, so it'd be public final set and the player players with settings GUI open it's new ooh that's cool I wonder if that actually works the way I think it does. Because that will give us an access to players, and if the player ever unloads, then we don't have to worry about it, he'll disappear out of the list. But uh, we'll keep track of a, a list of players with the GUI open, and this will handle, be handled via packets. So as soon as we open the thing, we'll send a packet to the server um, saying uh, the GUI was opened. I'm trying to think of how to handle this though. And we, I'm going to rename this real quick. This is going to be a uh, packet access UI. And we're going to start implementing different handling here. So we're going to go, okay, if else, if uh, ID equals two, this will be our packet handler for um, our access thing. So we. We need to keep track of when players have things open. So so we'll use packet ID for the close, and then the open will be any time uh, a request packet is sent. Um, complicated is what this is. Because I have, I have no way to determine if that packet is still open. Q 
keep alive packets, how we're going to have to do it. Okay, so we're actually going to use number two as a keep alive packet. And then I need to change this real quick. So we're not going to use a weak hash map in here. The, the honest truth is we didn't really need one to start with. I was considering the possibility of it because, well, it looked kind of nice. So I'm going to keep track of the player, and we want to keep track of the last time a keep alive packet was sent. And then if that time is too long, we remove them and we stop sending packets to the client. And then we could, in theory, put an event handler on our packet read system that's designed to say, hey, you sent a uh, packet to um, so-and-so and it didn't work. And we'll do that. Um, uh, we'll keep this as do request real quick. So we'll just initialize this with zero. And this will be our keep alive packet. So we'll go. Um, <clears throat> so we want the current. So we, we need to actually make a couple helpers here. Protected. Void clear. So we'll make something called clear GY, which will basically be. Ah, oh, this is going to be tricky. So what we, we want to do is we want to run uh, clear right before we call this. And we want to run clear right before we call that. Uh, so what we're going to do is if, if he's refreshing the GUI, we'll have it reset the entire GUI. So we'll reset all of our states, all of our current access system. So we're going to do that really quickly. So if the packet quest is here. Uh, current uh, profile index is equals negative one. Current profile equals null. And that should work. That'll, that'll reload everything and it will basically clear your screen. You won't have anything on your screen. And that'll prevent errors if it's reloading. And there'll be some other stuff we have to do like uh, else if id equals one. So this will be the packet handler for this. So it'll be, so be slash refresh profile list. And then this will be well, refresh profile. Then we need to also do a save profile to save profile. And we'll, we'll go ahead and put three in here, which will be new profile. I'm going to have to probably make some dialogues here too. So we'll have to do some yes or no dialogues, confirm dialogues, stuff like that. Because when you go to click uh, refresh, you might want to do uh, yes, no confirm in case you accidentally hit it. Um, deleting profiles, for example, would have to definitely be a yes, no confirm. Uh, there'll be a few other things we'll have to do. But here we go, do request. And we're going to go ahead and we'll make some here. So we'll go packet access, do request, and then this would be current profile, or this would be profile IDs, current profile index. And what we do is we're going to create method do request, and we'll just have that set up and we'll handle it. In a bit. Yeah, this means we're, we have more data to synchronize. So, you know what this is actually going to do is I need to extend packet type now. And then we'll do super dot encode into ctx buffer. Uh, you shouldn't be X strap. You should be a, uh, maybe there's not a handling for it. So let's go packet. Let's go look at how packet tiles handled real quick. And it, it's cause it should extend packet type. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, it has its own little thing going on here. Data buffer slice. Okay. Because what we'll do is instead of coding up individual things, we can just encode our data directly in here. So when we actually send this packet, we can send with an ID. So we'll make sure this is zero. Um, 
And this is our packet one. And then then we can write the profile ID into that. Cool how that's set up, by the way. <laughs> Saves a lot of time. And then we'll, we'll make our keep alive packet while we're at it, too. So we'll make our keep alive. And this will just be packet ID, too. And how our keep alive will work. I don't want to send it every single update on the tick. So we're going to have to keep track of our last last update. So we'll go long last update equals 0L by default. And we'll come down here and we'll go. This will be useful too if we want to do animations later. System dot current time mills. And then we go, okay, if uh, last update. Go last update, or actually know what we want to do. System. Dot current time mills is greater than a thousand. So we'll send uh, the keep alive packet every single second, um, and this will be packet access gy dot keep alive. If the keep alive ever fails, by the way, um, what will happen is you just will fit, you will stop getting packet data. Luckily, as long as it's firing, you'll keep getting packet data. Um, so if if for some reason you you miraculously or magically the keep alive packet stopped firing for a good 10 seconds, you got removed from the packet update list, and it fired again and sent up there, you would immediately be added to the packet list again. Um, so there's no problem there. The thing is, though, if you're gone for 10 seconds, uh, I'm pretty sure Minecraft will kick you anyways, so a thousand, that's fine. What we'll do is we'll probably wait a good 10 solid seconds or maybe more before we pop people off the list. Um, so load profile. And what we also want to do... We do want to reinitialize the GUI, because that's actually important to clean it real quick. Uh, we do need some packet handling down here. So when we go to send packets, we got zero, which is our read in, and we got packet one, which is that. So we want to go if ID equals zero, uh, we return true, of course, because we're going to read that packet. Then we go else if our packet is one. Uh, so this will be read profile list. Read profile. So for our read, it'll be current profile equals now, this is actually complicated when you think about it. So what we want to do is we're gonna go okay, current profile something. Because the problem we're running into is what I'm, I'm thinking of my head, and this is not evident what, what I'm thinking. But uh, when we go to load it up, and say somebody's editing the GUI at that exact moment and we reload all the data, you can wipe out all their changes. So we need some kind of system that would prevent fields from being edited in real time. We need to make sure we don't reinitialize the GUI every time we load, but we do need to update the GUI. going to be complicated. So, so we go if profile equals null, I think we just want to make a new one real quick. And then if it doesn't, we're just going to load it. So it'll be new access profile and it'll be byte buff utils dot read tag from buff because we're just going to synchronize as a tag. And yeah, cool. This, there is a there's a system here. Um, this is a global profile, but it's on the client only, so we don't need to do anything with that. So we want to load, and hopefully this doesn't get screwballed here. We'll have to we'll hit that when we hit that. 
So then we want to go else current profile load, and we want to load data up from it. So that'll reload any changes we have, and then we're going to want to make sure we uh, we update the the GUI. Um, we need some way to track changes, and that's that's the really dumb part about this. I need some way to track that. So that's, that's how we're going to do server-side. So server-side, we're not going to send a packet every single tick to the user because these profiles can get pretty large. And at least in theory, they might get pretty large. So you don't want to be sending like a megabyte of data to somebody every single update you want to do. So we'll need some kind of system inside the Axe profile that will go, okay, hey, I have changed. And then you, what you'll do is you'll keep track of that change event and then you'll fire the packet off to the client on the change event. Um, but we got that. And then this right here, we need to go int n equals buff dot read int or int i equals zero i's less than n that reminds me i gotta go test somebody's python code uh blue something whatever his name is he was complaining it took him 18 minutes to do something with python code i'm like 18 minutes is a bit long i was looking at that like i've written really really complicated physics simulations in uh, python before because at the time i was in um studying physics that was the language that they recommended to use. And I had physics simulations that ran under five minutes that were calculating things like Astri belt collisions and stuff. And we're talking thousands of thousands of objects smashing into each other. And that was taking not very long. And he's like, hey, it's taking 3,000. We have 3,000 numbers and we're doing like a greatest sum check. And he's got, although his his equations got a uh, an O of to the power of three complexity kind of, it's, it's smaller than that. It's actually a log is what it actually is. It's like O times log times something. Um, essentially, he's got a really huge equation. But back to this. Uh, so we want to go profile IDs equals new string in. Uh, we also want to do this. We'll go int prev n equals profile IDs dot length. And what we're gonna do down here is we go if prev n does not equal n. Uh, we don't want to reinitialize the whole GUI, but we kind of need to. I have an ideal. Because the, 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 what I need to do is if the profile list changed, so if like the number of, of these we have, some reason changes, like you got you removed from a profile and it disappeared off the list. We just need to reload this part. So what we're going to do is make protected void create profile list. And a good thing we're separating this out as well because this actually will uh, makes for some interesting thing if we can make some kind of object which is a list here later and that would just solve this problem for us. Um, yeah, so we'll do it this way. So we'll go make profile or go create profile list. And then what we want to do before this is we want to go for GUI button two, button two, profile buttons, button list. So we remove the buttons, we re add the buttons, and this will create it and this will set its enable status too, so we make sure our index is correct. Um, <clears throat> We need to do one more thing. So we need to go uh, to do ensure index matches because the index is going to change here. So we need to make sure the index matches. So if all of a sudden we were selecting number three, but number three also became number one, it, we need to move it. So we need to make sure we get whatever our current index is. And yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll handle that later. It's not that big of an issue. Okay, so we get these and I need to go look at which is which. Okay, we, they're both, we write two strings, but it goes name then ID. So it'll be profile names.i equals, oh, byte 
buff utils dot read utf string. Which, by the way, how does this actually work? Read var, so we get the length, then from to string index length. Huh. It has a uh, it has a system already to build into it. it just I, I, the reason I was interested with this is because I got to add packet handling to the game I'm working on here eventually, and I'm like, oh, how's that how's that work? I've never I've never bothered to actually stop to see how um, people read strings back and forth. And I'm surprised that the system just doesn't include it one by default. I mean, you would think strings are very, something really common, but they're just sending a char array across, and you just got to get the length of the char array. So that's not too hard to do. Anyways, this gives us a profile names. We read our packet thing in here. We got to go up here and we got to write it. So we get an ID of this. Then what we need is string access group equals data dot. I don't know if we need to do this. I, yeah, we just did this here a second ago. My brain just. I think that'll work. We may have to check that. Um, so then we go get access group group. Oh no, not access group. We want access profile. Profile equals global access system. Get profile access group. If profile doesn't equal null, we're going to send a different packet to the client if the uh, profile is non-existent. It'll just be uh, packet ID something. Packet ID five, I guess we'll do that way. And what it'll be is uh, package UI data dot write. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Once again, we just did this where we need to utilize the byte buff thing. My brain's like, because if it feels so natural to just have a, a read and write string built into your system, because once again, strings are so common to uh, use. There, I mean, after all, we speak words, not numbers. Um, so you would expect that there would be some kind of string write system in here, and there's not. Uh, so we just want to go error dot whatever the error is. Or actually, it would be error profile uh, not found. And that would be translated, by the way, locally. So that's the reason why we're sending a, something like that. And we send it down there, and we would come back over here, and we would have some handling over here. So we go like, else if id equals five return true the, the whole return true thing is actually not necessary to be honest where we there's this is more than likely not going to be extended and reused but might as well follow the standardization i've got in place uh what we're going to do is string error message error message equals this right here and then we come back up here and we would go if error message does not equal null and error message dot is empty or rather not empty then we would draw it pretty much so we draw centered string and right slap dab in the middle of our screen is where we're going to draw this I, I wanted height not hash code height and this would be whatever the error code is. So we go um, language. Yeah, I, mean, I actually would even check to see if the language utility is going to actually uh, convert to the the new types of systems. Uh, and then I need caller dot red dot two or get RGB. So nice big red error message in the middle. Um, Should work. We can put a try catcher on this too. Well, actually, you know this? No, that is not a try. Uh, no, yeah, there is a try catch. So there'd already be some kind of error handling for this. Um, we would want to put error handling in here later, though. We'll, we'll get to that. So we got that. Uh, here's our keep alive packet. We'll do that later. Oh, we have recording time. 50 minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll do this real quick. So we want to go. To do remove player from all uh, access 
or I'll pack it updates. We'll have to make a thread system for this, or not a thread system, but a post tick system to do this. We'll go to do um, ensure player is added to active packet act, active profile. And we forgot to do something here. So when we do the keep alive, we got to actually tell the system what packet we're, we're looking at. And this would be <laughs> pretty much data profile right this. And then we would go pretty much get this real quick. Actually, we just pretty much can just code this real quick. So it would be profile dot uh, players GUI open dot put player dot system dot current timeouts. There we go. That's our keep alive system. And we want to we want to clear him off of everything but the one he's got to open. Now at this point, we basically are just clearing it every time we we go to send a packet, which is counterintuitive, I guess. What we'll, we'll do we'll deal with it later. Uh, we need a player here. I just realized that we can't actually just do things like that. Because it's like, what, wait, what, what player do you want to clear? To clear all the players or clear that player? And fuck it, we're just going to go ahead and uh, code this up. So this would be uh, access profile, profile, and this would be uh, global access system. Yeah, we're going to have to make a thing here. Create getter. And what we want is collection, pretty much. Because I believe the uh, hash map returns collection. So we want to do that. And then it'll be uh, name to profile dot values. Import class. There we go. Uh, that'll work. Uh, what we do is I'm going to go if profile is equal because uh, profile can equal null in that return. And then what we want to do is call profile dot um, players with this open dot remove player. That's actually pretty quick. So if you have like a, even ha had a thousand uh, access profiles, it, it still runs in roughly constant time. It's pretty quick. So it's, it's, it, this is an O of N operation for those who want to know the technical thing for it. Um, so this will be keep alive, and it'll be current profile get ID. So that's going to go of current profile does equal null, and yeah, that'll work. I've completely lost my train of thought on a lot of these, uh, but we got a lot of code in here. <laughs> um, we need to make some fake packet stuff real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to jimmy rig this. So what I want to do is if so well, this is empty, uh, and we're going to do this real quick so I don't accidentally release a major bug. Then what we want to do is, because if it is empty, we want to just make a whole bunch of profiles. Um, so I'm going to go profiles.add, um, access utility, dot create. No, no, we're not going to do this way. I believe it's actually just new access profile. And it'll be the player. Uh, I know there's a, there's definitely a player option here. Or there was once upon a time. Um, or actually, no, we do this. We're going to do uh, create profile. Uh, no, that's not it either. I, I, it's got to be the access profile system. Okay, so access utility dot create default build new okay take a look at this 
I know there has to be some system for this. Build new group set, get groups. Nope, it's not it. There, there's, there was a system for this. So we're just going to have to do it this way. Access profile, profile equals new. Access profile. Ah, oh, I think it's just generate. Yeah, it's generate new. That's what I was missing. So it's, uh, it's access profile. And then... Yeah, it's being weird now. Oh, come on. Why aren't these static? This is not set up at all, right? Wait, global. This dot global equals global. Actually, we'll do a. We gotta do legacy because there's guaranteedly something uses this and it'll just freak out on me. So, this will be this dot global. Can't access character has been lol. So just leave this empty. So new access profile dot generate new. Do we have to have a name? Okay, so the name is just a display name. Uh, so we're going to call this uh, profile one, I guess, and it'll be player. This this is set the uh, set the. Control B. Literally the only place it's used. Uh, so the owner is not set for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know why. Profile dot get group or get get owner group dot add member player. That way he's marked as the owner, and we'll just add profile real quick, and then we'll just duplicate this. Yeah, the, the thing with the access system is I made it once upon a time. It was actually made for MFFS with its original design. It uh, it did eventually get some use in that mod. It, I think the newer classic update actually almost fully uses it now. Uh, but it didn't really get used much, um, unfortunately. I mean, this, I knew this, the sentry guns eventually got a really good use out of it, but it was still limited. Because the original vision ideal was, of course, with a global system where you could log into with your sentry and do everything. Well, that just that basically what I'm trying to get to is though is that it's seen no development. We I mean we got really crappy method call sets and I need to just go through and overhaul the whole system, which is going to probably happen maybe this week or next. Um, so if it's empty, we make a whole bunch of this stuff and what will happen is this will get registered with a global system, I think. I have to, um, apparently, uh, handle this, and this is not, uh, name, this is ID to profiles, 
So this actually needs to be changed. ID. There's literally no handling for this. So bad. Profile dot get ID profile. So much work gonna have to do just to get this done. What I'm probably gonna do is I'm just probably gonna give every player a single profile. I'm not gonna add a create create button. You're just you'll be able to edit a single profile and you'll you'll be able to use it on all your stuff. Is probably what will end up happening for the first iteration and the second iteration I'll add a create button. Um, this will work because this means it will will actually get stuff sent to uh, the client. So we'll have an actual real profile list, and that means then we can actually get an, get profiles. Um, oh man, I I have this strong urge just to really quickly just start. Uh, J unit testing so much stuff right now because this is not good looking. So many problems here. Byte buff utils dot write tag. It's a high likelihood I may just go back to working on ICBM after I get this in a usable state and just not look at it for a while. Okay, what, how is this? What does the method call this? It is two and then the thing. Okay. Okay, so that'll be our update for our data. And I was going to debug at this point rather than spending a huge, huge amount of time working on it. So when we click something, it'll request information. And what we we need to do, okay, we need to go, okay, else if we're not rendering an error, we need to render a message. I need to figure out whatever this caller is real quick and cache it somewhere. It's pretty much white is what it is, but I don't know if it's actual white white or if it's some kind of like light gray. Um, so what this is going to be, is this going to be uh, waiting, this would be gui.access.waiting. Waiting on server, and that'll be um, if uh, current index does not equal negative one, and then if it does equal negative one, or if it, alternatively, uh, it'll be access profile select a profile, or we'll get rid of the a select profile. I don't know what that is. That seems important though. MM dev API open playback. It's coming from OpenAL apparently. What if that's freaking out because uh, I actually have all of the OpenAL and GL stuff installed locally instead of letting Minecraft actually get it. So I'm actually doing all the game dev stuff now and with that I have to have so much stuff installed. Uh, there needs to be an easy button when it comes to this. The thing is, I actually figured out I can make a game with Java without using OpenGL. It's just it would run like it run like crap because then you're doing everything in the CPU. Although, with the style of games I make, it's not exactly too big of a game of issue because I'm making 2D games that aren't in real time. Um, got nothing on the side here. Problematic this is. I don't see any crashes. I'm not getting my text in the middle of the screen here. Something's weird. Okay, select a profile. So why, why is there a trim problem there? I shouldn't have had to trim that message to get that to fix. Okay, we're missing our buttons on the side here. That's probably... Oh, I, I know exactly what's wrong here. I didn't put uh, this here. Create profile list. Okay. These aren't real profiles, though. 
So we're going to probably actually set these to null. So it's going to say waiting on server, and the server is going to go like, you don't have squat. Um, actually, you know, it's pretty important. I uh, needs to be a handler here somewhere. When you select load profile, it needs to do request to get your current profile. I definitely need more coffee. <laughs> I'm sitting here typing and my brain's like, hit this button, hit that button. It's like, you know, these aren't the right buttons we're trying to hit. Okay. It should have done a request packet. So we're gonna we're gonna check to see if this is doing its job properly. Um, so this is packet ID one. Okay, I'm not getting anything here. Curious thing is, oh, nope, nope, we got something. Why did we get that packet after I closed the GUI? Oh, oh, I know why. Um, hmm. Main game loop turns off when you uh, open that GUI. Okay, so we need to make sure our profile does not pause. So is there like a pause option here? It does pause game. And I'm going to return false. So you're not going to get some weird pausey pause thing out of the uh, GUI, unfortunately. I can't fix that. If I can't get my packet handling, we can't make a functional GUI. And there is a way I can fix it, and I, I know how to make it work. But the amount of effort I would have to put forward to just do packet syncing outside of the main game loop is not worth it. Because I have to make my own packet server, then I gotta make each client have a packet listener, and I gotta make the two talk to each other. Although it's, it would be good experience, but it's one of those effort versus reward systems. The reward is really low because almost nobody will notice I ever did that, and the amount of effort is really high. It'll probably take me all week to get to work correctly because I'm working on a packet system for my game right now, and it doesn't work, and I spend a month on that. Um, well, I casually spend a month on that, a couple hours a day type of thing. Not where I do this Minecraft stuff where I'm 10 hours a day. Not quite 10 hours a day. It's How that's been working out is I've been doing somewhere between five to 10, averaging roughly around six. Some days it'll be 10 hours, some days it'll be five hours. Some days I'll just skip out on modding altogether. Um, right now it's gonna be the next two weeks is gonna be doing constant mod development every single day until I get updated. After all, I did promise you guys that I'll get by the end of the month an update to 1.8 and I'm gonna miss that period again. Oh, looks like my brother's home. He went and donated plasma. I'm considering doing the same thing at this point to get money. Kind of a sucky thing when you think about it. In order to pay for college, you have to do stuff like that. Okay, so we'll get this loaded up, we'll toy around with this. I'm probably going to make more GUIs like this too. I want to do a crafting screen that's exactly like this as well. That'll be really nice, big open window. You'll be able to see all your stuff. Look really nice. Error profile not found. Cool. So we're getting our error messages now. That's good. Uh, when we go to reload the GUI. I need to set um, error message back to empty. 
so that way when we switch tabs the error message does not stick around so yeah you see it it, it hit there for a second and then you got the error message saying we can't find the profile so packet handle is working uh, and then our world's updating behind us so you can see the pig moving right there and the sheep so now we need <gasps> the look is that it's just doing things it's not doing things appropriately but oh we crashed didn't crash the full game though we just crashed uh, the server Okay, um, I need to write done. I need to, to handle a slice on my data. So data dot slice really quickly. Um, I think I think it's uh, I need to go. I need to get a packet tile and see what packet tile does. Because I I because well, the thing is it, it does already run buffer dot slice, but we we do buffer dot slice down here again. I don't understand why we do it twice, um, especially considering we pull the packet ID out of this. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to select this whole thing real quick, do this, find every instance of data, replace it with that. Oh, you know what's, what's up? It's uh, I don't think the uh, the buff is initialized. Shoot. Wait, what? Let's go look at this again. Okay, we failed on our write method of our data. Um. I'm gonna hit Control Z real quick. Get rid of this. We're clearly not handling something correctly. I think we're, I mean, maybe it's the packet GUI doesn't have a, doesn't have a data pull. I mean, it should, because the data is uh, an unbound pull. It should just work. And we, we write it and we read it. So let's let's take a let's take a look at our, our handling here. Why what we happened? Uh, index out of bounds. Writer buff exceeds max capacity of twenty four. Uh, so we just tried to write too much junk to the system. Oh crap. Didn't know we even had a max capacity for that. So the max, so the max capacity on. Okay, so writer index plus write buff exceeds max capacity of twenty. Is that twenty four bytes? Why would our why would our system be designed with a cap that's only that big? How do we how do we declare we need a bigger cap? I've sent bigger packets on this. I know that for sure. I don't think the MBT is that messed up so we go right short right short right short mbt right short packet buffer to mbt packet buffer utility handle here we call right <clears throat> right to mb tag buffer Okay, um, shit, we broke the base system and I don't know how to fix it. Uh, 
I'm just going to run a rebuild real quick on everything. When I sit here and I think about this. I cancel quit on this. So we create a new packet. Then we write our MBT. So we got we need to look at the profile real quick and see what the is doing. And the thing is, I don't think it's doing anything. So we write our name, our our Boolean check for global, our profile ID, and then we write our groups. And the groups will then write users. Uh, we should only have like four groups. Group save, tag list append, put tag list in here. So this is not a very deep uh, MBT tag list because we're only going to have maybe five groups by default. Each group maybe has maybe six or seven tags. So you're, you're talking only maybe maximum, not even like a kegabyte. So there's something weird going on with this and I <laughs> don't know what to necessarily do to fix it. So let's go stare at packet tile because packet tile works. We, we know that packet tile can write some pretty large data to it. Uh, so we got our data here. We got our handling. So when we go to packet type and we got our write, so we write any. The interesting thing with our data here, and I, I haven't been thinking about it correctly, is instead of doing what I'm doing here, which I'm writing directly to the data thing, I can go data dot write, or not data write, I can go package UI write and then pass MBT in. So we could be, have been doing that instead. And what I can even do even further with that is I can go like this and then call profile.save. And it's just, I don't really care what we're sending, it's just packet. So we're gonna do that, and I wanna go look at write real quick. Um, I actually need to go look at this. Does have handling for MBT, so there's an MBT handle down here somewhere. And yeah, that calls write tag. I don't see any anything in here that expands the size automatically, uh, but it's better than nothing. We try that. If that doesn't work, then uh, we have to manually sync our packets, or we manually sync our profile, which. If we're having a length problem, we wouldn't change anything. We'd still have a problem. But the thing is, if we do, we do manually sync it, uh, what we can do with it is instead of syncing all the data, uh, we can sync only the group names. So if we're on the group, so if we, have, we, have the, we have the group tab open and we're looking through the groups. We sync all the names and then when you click to open one, then we sync that group specifically. Uh, then on the user tab, we do the same thing. We sync all the usernames. And then when you click a user, then we slink all of its nodes and all groups it's attached to and stuff. And that way you're running bare minimum bone data on your client. And that gives us more control. A lot of work we gotta do. Uh, though the thing right now is I'm not gonna do group editing because the thing is, all this stuff can be command driven. Is this actually probably how I should have hit this up first? As I should have went through the command system first. I already have all the commands in place for it. All I got to do is uh, change them from editing the permission systems to editing uh, your individual uh, group thing. Uh, I'll probably hit that up and actually do that here maybe later this week if I can't get the GUI working. Um, and if I get the GUI working, I'll hit it up maybe next week. Because then the commands will be an alternative. They'll be for those people that just want to go really quickly. Go, okay, uh, go profile 33, add this user to the, the group. That way you can quickly add and remove people from your sentry grids without having access to the GUI. It'll just be one of those really, really fast things. And the GUI will be designed for more refined control. So it'll be a, the GUIs will be a visual version of the commands. And to be honest, I could probably write, write them up that way. So that way, instead of... Um, Instead of sending packets, you fire commands to the server, and the server then just hands everything command system. I think the, the old version I had, so the old profile access system I had, I think I did it that way, and I deleted that whole profile thing when I updated 
because um, I was like, you know what, I'm sick and tired of working on this. And so we're waiting on the server to access our profile. Error profile not found. Error profile not found. IDs are missing. Somehow this profile name got set, and that's not that ID. <laughs> Um, there's a read write error there somewhere. It's actually not that long of a number. But why did profile one read correctly and then profile two is like, nope. Profile three's then got the ID of the other profile. Uh, something broke. So we're waiting on the server to send us data. And if we open this up. Does not exist. Generating save file profile two dot dat dot dat dot dat dot dat dot dat. Um. Okay. Which is dumb, really quick, is I believe this is going to save in like the wrong folder on top of that. Uh, but there clearly is an issue. Let me drag this over here. Uh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to go to this folder. Wrong folder. So, Volts Engine. Um, we're in Run Two. Saves. New World. BBM. Okay, so it is not a generated access profile folder in here. So let's go back out here and see. That's the data folder. It's not there. It's definitely Run Two. So we need to see if there's any weird pathing in here. Yeah, this folder system is weird. Um, so it's not saving the profiles, which is not too big of an issue. So you go to save file, does not exist in the save folder, generating new MBT in, in its place. Okay, this is trying to load the profiles from disk is what this is trying to do. Um, But we need to figure out what's up with our, our system here. So we are writing stuff. So we're writing profile.name and this to our thing. So the packet data is being written correctly. And you know what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna go back to doing uh, packet this dot write and profile dot get name. So I think this actually functions better it looks cleaner too. I have to remember that we, we have this system. I have to start using it more and more often. Okay. And then... I know why this is failing. We're not reading that Boolean. That is uh, that is really important and we're not doing that. That's probably why this system, when we go read locally, is uh, screwing up. So we just really quickly need to go uh, buff... Read Boolean. Even if we don't plan to use it locally, it has to be read or it throws off the order. And if we go ahead and do that, it, yeah, it fixed it. There we go. So we got all of our IDs and stuff. And then it, it generated these all at the same time. So they all had the same profile ID. How did, how does that happen? There's, there's, th there should be no way that would be. Cause now we have, we have five profiles all with the same ID. Um, that that shouldn't have happened because it gets the system current time mill unless these are running in nanoseconds. Uh, we can fix this though by just doing this. Get nano time. It, your number is going to be longer. But oh well. There we go, numbers are different. Uh, although I do have to admit those numbers should not have changed because they should have been registered. Um, so when we call this method, which we're gonna do real quickly here, something's not working properly. So the profile does come back. Info.accessprofile.toString. Ah, whatever. 
it's finding a name. It doesn't contain the users, so something uh, something failed on the contains user check. So that means something's not working correctly with something down here. So we're going to hit this up. Um, and we're, actually, you know what we're going to do? Since we're still in the debug mode here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to see what this uh, contains check is actually doing. Uh, command center name is probably not right. Uh, this whole system needs to be switched to a UUID system, which it, it is actually in the back end already switched. It just, I don't know what happened. We're still using command center names. Okay. I know it's I know it's wrong here. Um, this needs to be has exact node. So there's a uh, there's a hierarchy system, and the hierarchy system tripped. So that's what uh, happened to this. I think it's just two strings. What I need to call here. Yeah, that'll work. Play. Hit refresh. Ah, uh, yeah. It just found twice the number of profiles. Oh well, we got uh, we got more things to work look at. Now we gotta figure out why we're not um, we're not getting our our synchronization. Um, so that'll be here. Be ID zero. Okay, so it is being clicked. We got our access ID. We found a profile matching the ID. Uh, and then I want to really quickly before we fire that packet off, I want to look at what it looks like inside of it. Data, capacity, array of magical bytes. So it did write a whole bunch of stuff to it. Okay. That's sending a packet of one. GUI packet. So then we come over here and we want to read this. Could be this thing here. Could be failing. Now I need to hit uh, play. Okay, so we do have a current profile. And let's let's take a look at what our current profile is. So uh, you know what? It may have been reading this whole time, and I may, my brain may have not. Um, yeah, it's 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 working. Um, so what we want to do is just really quickly hit play, and we just have to render data. So we actually want to go um, current profile doesn't equal null. Current profile dot get name. So we'll pull the ID always from the profile first because it'll have the updated information on it. Um, so if you ever change the name, oh yeah, I left a uh, debug line there. Okay. The thing is that message should only show up if the current profile is null. So let me go ahead at the access system here. Current profile index doesn't equal negative one. Oh. I'm going to do current profile equals null. Then we say, okay, we're waiting on the server. And then what we want to do is go else. Actually, we don't want to do anything else. So that gets rid of that message right in the middle. Problem is that message isn't popping back up. So that means when we're switching, we're not killing off our profile. Uh, so what we do is we want to load. We want to go, okay, current profile equals null. So we're going to kill it off. 
and you see, yeah, the message popped up, and yeah, that was so so short of a delay. So that tells us it's working properly. Now in the draw screen system, so we want to go. Yeah, this is a cluster mess. Uh, we're just going to come out here. So this will be uh, debug messages is what we're going to label these. And yeah, we're here. We'll go current profile does equal null. We'll start just rendering all the GUIs here. So we go access group group current profile dot get groups. And then we want to have some kind of Y variable here, Y equals zero. And then we'll grab this. And then we'll be Y times 20. But we'll do like plus plus on it. So that way we'll render all the groups and we'll do like G. Plus Y. Yeah, we got all of our systems, I guess. That didn't work as intended. Oh, because we're, we're doing ID. Uh, so what we want to do is group dot get name. And then we want to make sure this is like 50. Yeah, so we got all the groups here. Uh, so I'm going to call the end of the video because we're at an hour 30 and I need to go take a break and get some coffee.